Hello everyone, welcome to another time-lapse sketching tutorial. Today I'm sketching this street scene here in Singapore and this is 695 North Bridge Road. And the watercolor palette that I'm using is the Kramer Pigments set number one. And shown on the screen right now are the full list of colors in this set. I'll just be using some of the colors out of the 14 that are included in this box set which by the way is selling for 80 US dollars and it's really worth the money. The paper I'm using is the Wind Ink Tense Paper which is very high quality 100% cotton watercolor paper. The size is 7 by 10 inches and the fountain pen I'm using is the Sailor Pen with the Zoom Nib. And this is the reference photo that I am using which you can download from the video description below. This whole sketch actually took me an hour to complete and I have condensed that into this short video you're watching on YouTube. So if you want to watch the full length tutorial, you can consider supporting me on Patreon to get access to the tutorial so that you can watch the video at actual speed and also learn more techniques along the way. And you can also support my YouTube channel directly this way through Patreon. The link to my Patreon page is in the video description below. I would like to give a huge shout out to my patrons who have been supporting me for years. Your help is invaluable. Your help helps me create videos like this and also settle some of the expenses whenever I go cover overseas sketching events. So this sketch is actually one of my favorite sketches because I was really able to enjoy drawing all the details and the watercolor just looks lovely and you shall see later on. So for drawing this street scene, I actually just drew the big shapes first then divided the big shapes into the different uh, shop houses and then I will proceed to draw the details within those big shapes. So now I'm just blocking out the rectangular shapes and dividing the long shop house into different segments. So you can see me dividing the wall into half and I'm drawing some little dots to help me divide the segments into correct proportions. That's the lamppost. Um, you can see me draw across on top of the roof that I have already drawn. Maybe I should have drawn the lamppost first before the roof so that there isn't this so-called mistake. Anyway, I'm not very particular about mistakes because this is a sketch. Sometimes I draw just to enjoy drawing, just to relax, so I'm not too particular or too bothered by mistakes. So once I've drawn the big shapes and divided the shop houses into different segments, I can draw the windows. And for the windows that are in the far background, you can see I have represented them with just vertical lines. And there are some cars on the street. And the way I draw cars is very simple. I just draw, I'll say, the big shapes, um, the windscreen, maybe dots or little circles for the headlights, or little circles for the wheels, and that's pretty much it. I don't draw too much details for those cars because they are in the background. So after drawing the big shapes, adding the little details is just icing on the cake. Now I would have preferred to draw this on location, but the thing is sometimes I just don't have the time. And also for the purpose of making tutorial videos like this, um, it's just easier to work with a reference photo. So now you can see me draw the windows and the little details on the windows. So once you have run out of space to draw the details, you can just stop with the details. And I love this fountain pen that I'm using with the zoom nib because I can draw thick and thin lines depending on how I hold the pen. And this pen may occasionally create some ink blobs, especially at the end of the line. So the end of the line sometimes may look thicker and I find that to be 
quite nice because it gives you that hand-drawn look and there's also this element of unpredictability which is a characteristic that cannot be duplicated with digital art now this watercolor paper is so satisfying to draw on the texture is very nice I would say the quality is on par with Archer's and Fabriano artistic goal but this watercolor paper is very expensive so when you buy watercolor paper always compare the prices first especially with Archer's and Fabriano artistic goal which are my two favorite brands of watercolor so now I'm painting the blue onto the wet surface and you can see the water moving down. So I'm using some wet on wet techniques here just to get that gradation. I'm also using some tissue to take out the paint to suggest the clouds in the sky. Now some of the paint in this Kramer pigment set is not fully transparent so notice as I paint over the lines some of the paint actually covered the lines so if you want to work with pen ink and watercolor I would say it's best to use watercolor that is perfectly transparent unless there is a certain color that you want that is not available with transparency then yeah sure go ahead get those <laughs> colors but if you dilute the watercolor with enough water, uh, the paint will still look transparent enough. When you're drawing, try to close up your lines, try not to leave gaps, and try not to use fuzzy lines. Uh, don't use too many lines when using one line is enough. So notice as I paint the roofs, the paint is also not fully transparent, and that's okay. Now try to paint with a limited color palette so that the colors can work well together. If you use too many colors, uh, it can be difficult to achieve color harmony because certain colors will work well together, certain colors do not work well together. If you start out with a limited color palette, um, for example, just one yellow, one blue and one red, you can be assured that the limited color palette will work very well together. And if there are some colors you cannot mix or create with that limited color palette, then yeah, sure, you can add maybe one or two extra colors just to create that color that you need but cannot mix with the limited color palette. So I'm adding the shadows on top of the painted, on top of the first wash. And if I remember correctly, this shadow was mixed with Cobalt Blue Deep PB74. And this color is very transparent. So if you want to paint shadows over other colors, definitely use a very transparent color. And I love this color, Cobalt Blue Deep. Interestingly, there is no Ultramarine in this Kramer watercolor box set. So now I'm just adding little details just to make the scene look more lively and adding the darker areas just to create contrast, just to create more contrast. Now for my sketches, I usually use uh, mixed media. I use waterproof ink uh, for the lines with watercolor, for the painting, I use white gel pen to add the white lines and sometimes I may also use Posca markers to add colors and to touch up certain areas that I have forgotten to paint over with watercolor. So now I'm adding more uh, black areas or darker areas just to create more contrast. Yeah, I mentioned that this clip was actually created in 2021 and now it's 2023. So I was actually looking for video clips that I can reuse because I want to make another video talking about the differences between sketching on location versus sketching with a photo, like what I'm doing right now. And I found some video clips uh, from this tutorial that I did not publish two years ago. 
Thankfully, I still have the archive for these clips. Otherwise, I would have recorded this video tutorial and did nothing with it. So notice I have just added some details with the red pen, which is the uniball signal gel stick, and all the bigger splotches of ink were added with the Posca marker. It is of course possible to add those splotches of paint or colors with watercolor, but sometimes it's more convenient to use Posca markers. And now I can remove the tape to create the border. So this is a small sketch. This is 7 by 10 inches. And I really love how this looks. Here's a close up on the sketch. Can you see the granulation in the sky and also the granulation in the roof and on top of the roof? Now the granulation may or may not be obvious depending on the paper texture that you are working on. And this paper texture is what I would consider to be fine grain. It is still cold pressed, but it's definitely not as textured compared to other cold pressed watercolor paper. So this is a very nice texture to work on for drawing and for painting. For drawing, you can draw with solid lines. Now if the paper texture is too rough, when you're drawing with ink, you can get those uh, dry brush effects. Um, the lines will have the dry edges and sometimes those dry ink edges look good, but sometimes the solid edges look better. It really comes down to personal preference. So you can see here with my line art, the edges are not perfectly solid. You can see the dry edges, the rough edges, which I find to be quite uh, nice. All right, let me know what you think about this sketch in the comment section below. And if you want to learn more about pen, ink, and watercolor sketching, you can check out the many free tutorials that I have on my YouTube channel. And do consider supporting me on Patreon to help support my channel and the work that I do here. See you guys in the next video. Bye!